If you've been watching this channel for a couple of years, you remember I did a video about the much misunderstood Panasonic G100. Why does everybody hate the Panasonic Lumix G100? Is it really that bad? No, I actually really enjoyed using the camera. I had no complaints at all with it as a stills camera. And ultimately it led to a journey where I actually purchased a Panasonic S5 as my main stills camera. And I've now got the S5 Mark II, so obviously I love the Lumix system. However, this video really killed it for me for autofocus. Now, if you look at the pulsing on this, this shot, it's just terrible. And that was the point where I decided the G100 had to go. So why am I making this video? Well, I think the time has come for me to ask the question, should I buy the Panasonic G100 again in 2023? Why am I even considering buying the Panasonic G100 again? After all, it failed me the first time, so what's going to make it any better the second time? And to be honest, it's all about consistency. I'm using two Panasonic S5 cameras now, the S5 original and the S5 Mark II, for my video work, and it would be nice to have colour consistency with the third camera. Now, at the moment, I've been using the DJI Pocket 2 for sort of doing my handheld vlogs and sort of walking around, and I know that this camera's going to be nowhere near as good for that. But I'm willing to take a compromise on that if it doesn't mean I'm going to resort in better colours and low light image quality. But of course the problem is, this camera is supposed to be the all-in-one vlogging solution. Now a lot of good things have been said about the audio system on the Panasonic G100 and to be honest I'm not 100% convinced. So at the moment I'm filming everything in this video on the G100 and basically, you're listening to me via the onboard mics. And now I'm going to switch to the Lumpel mic, which is my normal solution. And let's have a listen of how different it actually sounds. So now I've switched to the Lumpel mic. And I suspect I'm going to sound a lot better than I do with the little onboard mics on the camera. On the opening section of this video, I had a quick listen to it and I wasn't very impressed, I'll be honest. So I do think I'd still end up having to use the lapel mic, so that's sort of a bit of a cross against the G100 because it still means I've got to carry another mic to get the audio. But it is something to fall back onto, so it's not a total deal breaker. But what about the autofocus? Obviously I'm sitting inside a van now, so it's going to get a little bit darker and I'm not really sure how well the autofocus is going to be working. Now, as you saw from the clip earlier, basically even at the park with a little bit of woodland, it was hunting a little bit, it's a slight pulsating. And I'm, I'm finding that really jarring, it's something I just I really do not like at all. But here we are, this is quite a static situation. I'm in a darkish van, so I'm hoping it can track me okay. I'm going to move my face around a bit. And it seems to be, but I suspect it's going to put my glasses on. I don't know. Really, I'm, I'm just I'm unconvinced by the technology. Now, I find it usable on the S5 Mark I, and it's using a very similar autofocus system, but I suspect the autofocus system's been refined slightly on that camera. And I find it usable, but I don't find it totally reliable. Now, the S5 Mark II is a total different ball game. That's that's pretty good. Still not perfect, but pretty decent. But, you know, this is a lot smaller camera. So, whilst I'm happy if the autofocus isn't quite as good, I do want it to be somewhere near, or else it's pretty much going to be unusable. Now, the 4K crop is a bit annoying, I'll be honest. Uh, I like shooting in 4K. I like the flexibility of being able to punch in and out in a shot and still maintain the quality. Now I know there's an argument that HD is fine for most things and at the end of the day I've got a HD telly and the quality looks great so 
perhaps I don't need 4K, but I just like to future-proof myself, and I think really, if a camera can shoot 4K, then I want it to shoot a good 4K, and I want to hopefully not have any crop. But obviously, this camera does have a 4K crop, which is really annoying, but it's not a deal breaker. Now, the fact that it's got a 10 minute record limit on 4K is far more problematic for me. Basically, I want this to be my third camera for wedding videography. Now, when I'm shooting weddings, what I generally do is I can shoot the entire ceremony, speeches, and first dance. Now, first dance isn't so much of a problem, but if you think of ceremony, this would be the third camera. And what I don't want to do is for it to stop 10 minutes during the ceremony and me not be able to get to it to restart it. So basically I need a camera that can be just left to do its own thing. Now the little last mile pocket, which I use as my third camera for vlogging and stuff like that, and I use for a third camera for wedding videos, does that absolutely fine, you know, I can just let it run. This, after 10 minutes, is just gonna stop, which is a major pain. Now, of course, I could record HD instead, and then I'm gonna get 30 minutes. But then I'm losing that flexibility of pointing in and out during the shots. And you never know, there might be a client who actually wants all of the video in 4K, and I don't think you want to start upsizing HD to 4K, because it sort of defeats the whole point. So yeah, that for me is a real bugbear. And of course, another problem with this camera is the lack of in-body image stabilization. So basically, you're totally reliant the IS of your lens, the image stabilization of your lens, or using the electronic stabilization of the camera body, which unfortunately means yet another cropping on your 4K. To the point of really to try and use it handheld, unless they just want a shot of my head, nobody wants a shot of just my head, really, it's gonna be pretty much unusable unless I go to HD. And it's back to that thing, this is a 4K vlogging camera, but I feel like the 4K really isn't that usable. But, you know, it's fine on a tripod, so perhaps it is something I could possibly work around. So to find out, I'm going to go for a walk to the beach and uh, probably take a long exposure with the Lord G100 and really just try out the camera for video purposes. And just in case you were wondering just how useless the image stabilisation is of this little camera, well, this is me walking uh, and you can see the crop well and truly in play. And honestly, it just looks a bit terrible, doesn't it? But, you know, I know so far it's just been full of negativities about this camera, but, you know, it does fit in my pocket and that is absolutely wonderful. So I've just put the camera through a bit of a dynamic range stress test. Basically what I've done, I've fitted a 10 times filter. Now talk about filters, look how small this lens cap is, it's, it's crazy small, 37 mil. Now I don't have a 37 mil adapter, so what I did is I used the blue tack method. So I put three dobs of blue tack around the barrel of my lens, gently attach my filter. I've done a video all about this, so I'll put the link to that video up now. And basically, I took the shot with the cliffs here in the foreground, looking out towards the sea and the pier, which was totally in the sun. So this is gonna be a real stress test, and it was a long exposure. And really, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work out how noisy it will be when I sort of lift the shadows out. So that will be an interesting one to see. But as I've said before, I think this is a great photos camera. And I think it was totally marketed totally incorrect. It was marketed as a vlogging camera and the reality is as a vlogging camera it's not the strongest performer but as a pocketable photo camera it's absolutely amazing and that's one thing I do love about it and that is one serious plus point about it. Now as I said earlier I've been using my DJI Osmo Pocket 2 quite a lot for video purposes but the photos on it are frankly naff. Good for nothing. So I don't mind carrying a little bit more weight and a little bit more bulk, as long as I can still fit in my pocket, which I can with this, if I can get good photos and half decent video. But the reality is I don't know if the half decent video is good enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna go back to the van, drive home, compile all these shots, and when I've put the video all together, including the final shot I've just taken, I'll record another piece and I'll tell you what my final conclusion is. The G100 is a bizarre little camera. Obviously, it's marketed as a vlogging camera, but in my mind, what its real strength is, is for stills. It's a great little compact camera for photography. It takes beautiful photos, and it pretty much does everything you need. And coupled with a small kit lens, it's actually, you have a pocketable solution, which is wonderful. As for vlogging, it's, it's a strange one, because actually the, the footage 
looks really nice, it's a really nice quality. But the autofocus is just unreliable. And unfortunately, there's no pattern to when it's going to work or not work. So really, you're not sure. For example, at the moment, I'm not sure if it's pulsing or not. And it just makes it all a bit hit and miss. So will I be buying the G100 in 2023? Well, the answer is yes, I already have. The camera filming me and the camera I've used for all this video is my own camera. Will I be keeping it is the biggest question and to that I don't really know the answer. I think I will persevere with it. It is nice having the bigger screen for vlogging as the person miles my pocket where it's got a screen that small that can't really properly compose much footage. Yeah, we'll see how we get on. Watch this space perhaps is what they should say. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something from it. It hasn't been a review as such. If you want to see more of a review of the camera, maybe refer back to my original video. But anyway, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you again soon for another one. Thanks for watching.